So today was actually a pretty crazy day because I got to play a game which I've been talking about for close to a decade, but I actually got to put my hands on it today for the first time on stream, and that's of course Skull and Bones. This is a game we've seen lots of trailers for, we've heard it discussed ad nauseum for years and years and years, but finally it seems to be approaching an actual release date of February 16th, 2024, and as a result they are starting to give certain players access to closed betas to try the game out before it's officially launched. And I'm actually one of these lucky few, I've gotten to play Skull and Bones, and in case you missed our live stream of of it, I'm here to break down my thoughts. Long story short, the game is not terrible, like there's a game here and I think some people will like it, but there's some really weird things about it too, some remnants of development hell and struggles that the team has clearly been placed under. And at the end of the day, I'm just still left a little bit confused as to exactly what this game is trying to be and what it's supposed to be for the modern audience. It, it's just in a word, strange. And don't you worry, we're gonna dig into all of it, and I'm actually gonna play the game for you here live in just a second. The first, to thank you to our sponsor, World of Tanks Blitz. World of Tanks Blitz is a cross-platform MMO shooter on mobile, PC, Mac, and even the Nintendo Switch. It's a deep strategy game with tactics and complex combat encounters at the core of the experience, with eight different game modes, 32 different maps, and over 450 legendary vehicles based in both historical fact and fantasy fiction. You guys know me, I've got two kids, one of which is five months going on six months and likes to wake up in the middle of the night for no reason at all and in those moments having a nice fun little game you can play on your phone or on your switch or on your laptop is great to have and I've been having a blast and as a history buff I also find it really fun to be able to actually drive and control these tanks and vehicles that I've read about in history books and seen in documentaries and stuff. Actually getting to experience it myself is really, really cool. And until December 20th, 2023, World of Tanks Blitz has a ton of holiday opportunities for you to enjoy, including a 10 stage celebrity quest with unique collectibles, avatars, profile backgrounds, all in the style of Vinnie Jones, because why not? So whether you're looking for a strategy game to sink your teeth into, or you wanna just engage with some of the holiday activities they have planned for the end of this year, check them out at the link in the video description box below or in the pinned comment or scan the QR code on screen to join the 150 million plus players from around the world who are already enjoying the game. Again, if you want to check it out, just scan the QR code here with your phone or you can follow the links in the description or pinned comment. Thank you again to World of Tanks Blitz for sponsoring the video. Let's get back to it. And here we are, Skull and Bones, a Ubisoft original. Closed beta. Now, of course, shout out to Ubisoft for hooking me up with early access to the game and the ability to try it myself, because we talk about these games, we have firm opinions on them, but at the end of the day, you just don't know until you play it. And this is one of those occasions where I think actually playing the game does it a lot of favors. It's better than I was expecting it to be, frankly. And voila, here we are in Skull and Bones, actually playing it ourselves. Now, the first thing you'll notice, of course, is that I'm not on a boat. I'm actually walking around. And in case you weren't familiar, this is basically how the game is split up. There are sections on the sea where you're sailing your ship and then other sections where you're in these hub-like areas walking around on foot, either cooking different meals to give your team certain buffs when they're actually operating the ship, uh, which is kind of a cool idea. And then also over here you can run and you can customize your ship. You can buy cosmetics if you want. You can refill on ammunition for your ship. You can meet other players, all sorts of stuff like that. There is no hand-to-hand -hand combat. There's nothing like that. It is all relegated to the ship, but there are at least hubs for you to engage with while you're on land, which is something you might not have heard of or been familiar with, so there you go. When you decide that it's time to take off, we're going to set sail. We run over to our ship, tap Y, and then you can either select, or in this case, repair the ship because I was in some combat, you can see you can swap it out for different ones if you want to, but I'm gonna keep this slightly bigger one than I have. This is after all a beta, we're not gonna get full access to it. But then we just select set sail, quick little Starfield-like loading screen, and then we pop up and we are 
ready to set sail. Now, while we sail away and set off into the great expanse of the ocean, I want to touch a little bit on how this starts, because as far as I can tell, they start us at the very beginning of the game during the beta so that we can see how it'll open up and how the game works. And how they choose to open this game up is a little interesting. They give you access to a big pirate ship. You get to engage in combat, learning how it works that way. And then they take that away from you. And then you start basically with nothing and you start over with basically just a little bitty schooner and nothing more. And uh, oh, look, we got we got some some uh friends shooting you can see it's not actually full-on pvp or anything you can shoot at at enemy uh ships and stuff it's not actually going to start combat unfortunately but i guess that's how they prevent griefers from being a problem i suppose now while we're sailing off into the great expanse of the ocean before us i want to give you a little recap of how the game opens basically they give you access to a large ship with lots of cannons and guns as part of a combat tutorial. You can see that on screen here from our live stream earlier today. And it gives you a pretty good idea of how the game functions once you have a fully upgraded ship. But after that, they strip all of that away from you. The ship crashes and you kind of start from scratch at that point. And I think that that makes sense. You know, you're trying to build up your own infamy. You're trying to make a name for yourself as a pirate. So you start from the bottom and work your way up. I think that makes sense. There's a long-term goal of building what's called infamy, which will allow you to unlock better ships and better equipment, better cargo holds, all of that stuff. So there's a very clear goal in terms of gameplay. Now, speaking of gameplay, this is a lot of it. You're going to be sailing around on your ship, as you would expect, and then finding different targets to engage with and... You might spot them off in the distance like this, or if you want to change your perspective, you can actually change to look through the crow's nest, or if you want to go down and basically go first person, you can do that as well, which is one of my favorite ways to do this. I just like seeing everybody run around because there are actual AI controlled NPCs that are running around performing the activities and actions that need to happen for the ship, just like in Black Flag all those years ago, which is really cool. And I just personally... Love seeing all the busy bodies running around making everything work. I just find it cool. Now, the game is certainly arcadey. It doesn't lean that much into realism. And you can tell just by the speed the boat's traveling and how high it's sitting in the water. It, this is meant to be a fun game where you're zipping around the waves and it's it's not super grounded or realistic. So you're, if you're hoping for something like that, I think you're, you're going to be disappointed. But what is here is actually relatively fun and straightforward as you can see we spot a ship here i decide i want to take him on so i'm going to sail off towards him i also have a particular ship that's kitted out for ramming so i'm going to try to blast towards him as quick as i can even though i'm headed into the wind i'm going to try to do this and then i'm going to brace and then ram him booyah love it now you see a little prompt for crew boarding that is because there actually isn't any hand-to-hand -hand combat in the game at all. If you want to board a ship, you can, but your AI NPCs are gonna be doing it. You're not going to. So there is no hand-to-hand -hand combat. There's no sword fighting or swashbuckling. You are able to press a button, your little guys will do it for you, and then you sail away and get all the loot. Now, all of this brings to mind, I think probably the operative question with regards to Skull and Bones, and that is like, who is this game for? Because on the one hand, I think a lot of us heard that they were making this game a spinoff basically of Black Flag and thought, okay, so it's going to be Black Flag, but without the Assassin's Creed stuff, right? So it's just going to be all about pirates without wasting any time on any of the other stuff. Modern day sequences, nothing. It's just going to be about pirates. That sounds actually pretty cool. And then years and years have gone by and they've worked on it time and time again, but it's not actually that. That vision that some of us were hoping for is not actually what Skull and Bones is trying to do whatsoever. I mean, they are trying to do something very, very different. Namely, they are trying to create what is effectively a World of Tanks-like game, but with pirate ships. They want to give you access to a bunch of different weaponry and a bunch of different ships that you can sail and then you go and you complete different missions to upgrade those and improve the damage on them tweak this tweak that and it's a concept for gameplay in terms of a gameplay loop that's been proven time and time again to be effective but it's not i think the type of game that many people were expecting to get out of skull and bones i think a lot of people were expecting black flag 2 just without the assassin's creed branding and so when they see this i think it's a little underwhelming for them because it's not what they thought they were going to be getting um 
which, you know, is, is a small distinction to make, but I think that that's why we've seen such conflicted responses to Skull and Bones. The people that have played it, to play it as a pirate little simulator where you're sailing your ship and just going around trying to clear out other enemy ships and enjoying the co-op component, those people have really enjoyed their time with the game, but anybody who tries to play it like a black flag has been sorely disappointed. And I think it's just a great example of mismatched expectations where some players are expecting Black Flag 2 and others are expecting kind of World of Tanks, but with ships and boats and stuff. And a lot of people just end up conflicted because once they get their hands on it, it's not what they were expecting it to be. I will say there are many remnants of Black Flag still here. There are those encampments over there. You can see these fortifications where if you want to take those down, we tried to do one on stream earlier today. You have to shoot out the towers and you and your friends can both, you know, take turns just lugging everything you have at them. And it can be a good time. I mean, I think there's fun to be had there, especially as reinforcements come in to help fight you off. But it still is not as fun in my mind or as satisfying as like in Black Flag when you actually storm the fortification to try and take it over yourself, swashbuckling and all. And perhaps that's the most aggressively obvious thing about Skull and Bones now that I've tried it. And granted, this is a beta. It could change. But what's been very clear to me is that this is a very competent sort of reworking of the sailing mechanics that were in Black Flag back in like 2014, 2013, 2014, but it doesn't really do anything else. It has like a foraging component. It has crafting stuff. It has cosmetics and things like that. But if you ask yourself like, what does Skull and Bones do way better than Black Flag? There isn't really much of anything. The combat within the ship is basically identical. The combat on land, of course, is non-existent. The crafting stuff is still there. Maybe it's a little bit more drawn out and stretched out over the course of the whole map. As you can see, there's lots of different locations to go foraging for different materials, but that I don't think is really a strength. It's actually a weakness that I'll get to in just a minute. The variability and variety of ships that you fight is not that crazy. Actually taking on fortifications isn't very satisfying because they're just built extremely tough and it takes forever to actually complete. There's just not really anything in my view based on what I've tried so far that Skull and Bones does better than Sea of Thieves or Black Flag, which I think is the most offensive of the two <laughs> that you could draw because that's another Ubisoft game that came out a decade ago. And to see them struggling to overdo it here after a decade of development is just a little disappointing. I would have hoped for more after all this time. Like it's not bad, but it's just not as good as that thing that they did a decade ago. And at that point it's like, so what have you been spending all your time doing? You know, like, <laughs> what are we doing? I, I will acknowledge like the cruise nest thing is cool. That's cool. But it just doesn't feel cool enough to justify 60 bucks, which is what they're charging for this. Now, just a minute ago, I mentioned foraging as a new system that they have at the core of Skull and Bones. And I want to delve into that a little bit more because it's what makes up most of the opening hour, hour and a half of the game. And not in a good way. It's it's actually kind of a, a baffling choice to have that be the centerpiece of the opening hour of the game. Basically, you'll be tasked with going around and collecting a bunch of random little items like wood or metal ore that you can use to craft your first ship after you shipwreck on this little island. I think this makes sense narratively, but it's a little frustrating because right before this, you get to engage in a pretty cool combat sequence with a fully upgraded ship right before it crashes as a combat tutorial effectively. As I mentioned earlier, I think it makes sense narratively and thematically that you start from effectively zero with having no ship at all and you have to start from the very bottom, but it doesn't feel very good to go from a super epic combat sequence to running around trying to forage different tree branches and metal scrap at random arbitrary locations around the game world in order to craft your first ship, an activity that can take anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour and a half, depending on how busy the servers are and how picked through all of the resources are. And as you can see here, the actual foraging takes place using a mini game where you have to press the button while the little arrow lands in the green zone in order for you to get the most resources available out of that location. I played this beta for an hour and a half on stream and within 30 minutes, I was already sick and tired of the 
this mini game. They don't shake it up. They'll change the angle. So instead of going this way, when you get this resource, the next resource, it'll go that way instead. But it's the same mini game, just rotated 90 degrees. And there are upgrades you can get to improve like your saw or your pickaxe and things that make it so it's even faster or easier to get more resources every time you do it. But this is a pirate game. Why am I performing a mini game to collect wood. Like it's the most uninteresting way of collecting wood possible that I could think of in a pirate game. Like I'm a pirate. Let me go sink ships and get the wood from their loot from the ship that's going down under the, the waves. Like, why am I doing it this way in the most uninteresting way possible? It doesn't make any sense at all. I've used this comparison before with regards to games that have like really cool themes and then choose to task the player with completing objectives in really boring ways. It would be like, if this were a Superman game, but instead of being Superman to complete objectives and level up and actually like fill out gameplay time that way, they tasked the player with being Clark Kent and just running around and getting like coffee for the office. And then you run and oh no, your, your checking account is overdrawn. So you have to walk all the way to the bank at 11 PM to deposit a check so that you don't overdraft when rent comes due tomorrow. Like. If you had this awesome theme, but then you chose to have the player do the most boring, uninteresting things possible the whole time instead of focusing on what actually would have been fun. That's like having a pirate game where you assign the player to go and forage wood on the coasts of all of these locations instead of having them do something really fun like hunting down enemy cargo ships and transports which have that resource within their hull and then collecting it that way which would just frankly be way way more interesting like right here i come over here we pull aside oh i'm gonna crash harvest bog iron like this is the game i i go around i collect that i got resources and i'm good and you can get those resources from defeating enemy ships as you can see over here if we try to like scan them. Let me see if I can scan this one. There we go. You can see it's got bombard bomb crate, silver, green art plank, cog wheels, ornate pistols, 150 infamy if I sink it. That's super cool. I think that's great. I just don't know why they don't have you do that. Why do they have all of these foraging systems if that's so boring in comparison to the combat? The other thing is that the map seems to be segmented into these little areas. So we have a large map. We have Rova Hill, we have all of this stuff over here. That's all great. And then as we look off into the distance, you can see there's a vast expanse of open seas. There's the coast of Africa. All of that is great. But frankly, this is not very large as far as maps are concerned. And I think it's because there will be more areas for you to warp to, basically loading into a different section of ocean instead of just sailing there, which, you know, I, I can understand why they might do that. I just find it really baffling. That's still a thing in 2023. If we're going to hold like BGS's feet to the fire for constant load screens and having little fish bowls for you to explore, it, it, like we have to do the same thing for Ubisoft here. Granted, these are very, very, very large fish bowls, but in my mind, there's one of two options. Either this is all there is to the game map, in which case there really is not very much for a game where it's mostly water, or there are more maps and areas for you to explore and they're separated by load screens, which to me is just a little underwhelming. I will say there are sections of the game that look really, really good. I do think that they have whatever the latest updated lighting system is and the water looks really, really good. So I think that's something to compliment as well. But other things look really, really outdated. Like you see all of the greenery and the rocks up on the hilltops look really, really outdated and old. They're all just 2D textured like cards I, I forget what they call them in game development but they're just little things and then they pop in as we get closer with some really 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 low poly versions of them and it, like it just doesn't look very good in comparison to like the lighting system in the water which looks great by comparison like that looks awesome and then this looks super outdated like this just looks kind of bad but everything on the other side looks great it's just very very conflicting and there's a lot of stuff like this in skull and bones where parts of it you can see are like modern and they have 
the latest lighting tech working and running and it looks awesome and then other parts you can tell okay that was probably built like in 2014 when they were first working on this and it's just a remnant a holdover of that and those little touches are all over the game and you don't really notice them at first but once you start to pick up on them it's really hard to ignore there's also a couple of other frustrations I've had such as the the frustration with like inventory management which for some reason every game nowadays wants to have like I don't see why this is fun to have to worry about your inventory and how many spaces it takes up it's just not that interesting to me and it's like the worst part of every open world game I, I get like they want you to have a reason to return back to your base to offload it or to sell stuff, but it's just, there's got to be a better way. It's just so boring and lame to be like, oh, I'm having fun exploring. Oh, wait, hold on. I have to go back and spend 10 minutes getting back to the base to be able to offload it into the warehouse and sell it off. Like, it's just always a little underwhelming every time it happens and it happens a lot in skull and bones at least so far but undoubtedly the one part of the game where i think it actually starts to excel is in the combat and i think that there is a good amount of room for growth and expansion here especially as time goes by and as you play more and more i think this could get really really robust i have not really seen a whole lot so far but i do have a starting ship and that's just because it's a beta so I guess it, it's to be expected, but I do hope that they can showcase some more gameplay that's probably a little bit more late game focused to really show what it's able to, to do, what the capacity is here. You can see there's ship repair tools as well we can use, and I just whiffed all of those. Ugh, love it. But if I go here, I can like shoot. There's also some weak points. I have to lead them. I can't just do that. I'm a professional. See, so that gives extra weak point damage. That's great. We can brace to try and reduce the damage that we take. But at this point, we have like a 40 second cooldown on our healing kits. So it's probably not going to go too well. And then we die. <laughs> <laughs> and then we can either return to sea for in-game currency or we can return to the dock. If we return to the dock, we just load back in on the shore, ready to go. And we can continue about our merry way. So all told, after playing uh, a handful of hours of Skull and Bones, I'm left thinking that this is a game I think some people will really like. I can see plenty of people playing this for hours and hours and hours and having a really, really good time with it, especially if you're big into pirate stuff. But for a lot of other people that were hoping this was going to be Black Flag 2, they're going to be sorely disappointed. And for 60 bucks, I think it's a big ask, especially because parts of it really do feel quite outdated while other parts feel really really modern it's just a very strange hodgepodge of different elements and remnants of old ubisoft games mixed in with new ones it's just a, a very strange amalgamation of all of it but i do think there is an audience for this are they willing to pay 60 bucks i think only time will tell uh, but i do think that this is like the ideal game for a game pass or you play uh, which I believe this is also coming to. So you can make 15 bucks to play this day one without having to spend the full 60. And I think in that capacity it works, but I think for 60 bucks, this is a big ask, especially when 60 bucks is going to get you like Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom, Red Dead 2. Need I go on? <laughs> so thank you to Ubisoft for sending me the copy of the game. I'm glad to try it and I'm hoping that we see more and more. And I'm hoping in future play tests we can actually see some like big boss encounters against mega ships with a kitted up later game ship that we uh, maybe just start with instead of having to start from the top of the game. Like I want to see what the end game or late game content is like and what's going to keep me playing for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours beyond just making incremental small upgrades to my ship while going and chopping down trees and collecting ore and stuff like that. But as always, I want to hear your thoughts on all of this because you guys are a lot smarter than me. So let me know in the comment section what you think, if you're going to be trying Skull and Bones when it launches in February, or if you need to see more. And if you need to see more, what are you looking for? Like, my big question would be, what is the one thing that if you found out about Skull and Bones, you'd be like, oh, I want to play it now. Oh, that yeah, I'm sold. What is that thing? What could they do to win you over? If anything, maybe the answer is nothing. I don't know. Let me know. But with that, I'm going to call it. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe and like the video. If you subscribe, it boosts my ego even more than it already is, which is greatly appreciated. <laughs> my wife is screaming in the corner. No, don't boost his ego anymore. Stop it. <laughs>
<laughs> it's it's too big already. He's going to explode. Anyway, that's going to do it for me. Thank you for watching. I love you all dearly. I'll see you in the next video. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Follow me on TikTok. That's a thing we do now. And uh, join me on live stream. I would love to see you. It is the Christmas season, and that is the season for watching people on stream, I've heard. I think that was in the book of live streaming, chapter four in the Bible. I don't recall. It was one of those. Anyway, thanks for watching. Love you all. Bye. I'm bad at outros. Bye. Bye.